Are you having trouble with water physics? We can fix that. Welcome to City Skylines. Hi, I'm Bomb Bomb B. Second to dealing with traffic, water physics is possibly the most problematic aspect of the game. Let's take a visit to Merrick's though, to put some of your problems to right. Here we'll be using the dry riverbed of the River Pan to start with the basics. First you'll want to head off to the workshop and subscribe to Extra Landscaping Tools by Bloody Penguin. And while you're there, why not subscribe to Merrick Stowe too? Once you've subscribed and activated the mod in the Content Manager, load up your game and you'll see a new icon in the menu bar. This is the Water Tool. Click on that and two options will appear. Move Sea Level, which we'll deal with later, and the more tricky and sometimes confusing place water source. So let's crack on with that. On the left hand side you'll see a slider for setting water capacity. Think of this like a tap. The higher the number, the faster the tap will flow. The settings run from 0.00 to 1.00. So basically it's just a percentage setting. Let's set it to 100% and plop down the water source in the river mouth to see what happens. Point of note, the water spawn point is directly under your cursor, not under the icon, which I like to think of as a glass beaker that hovers directly above. This took me a while to realise and even now sometimes my brain will switch off. <laughs> okay, now that's a lot of water. Let's hope the viaduct can hold firm. The thing to remember is that there are two forces that affect water movement. Gravity, water will run downhill and in this case, water pressure, forcing the water in all directions. Well, that's flooded my quarry, and these guys aren't going to get to work anytime soon. Let's fix things. Back to the water tool, and right click on the beaker, and this will delete the water source. It will take a while for the water to run away. Lucky for us, I have a fast forward key. Any isolated water remaining, no matter how large the lake, will eventually evaporate. And if you wait long enough, the foliage and the ground textures will return to normal too. Just for reference sake, from deleting the water source to the ground returning to normal, took 15 real life minutes. You might want to do something else other than watch. Rather than set it at 100%, let's set the slider to the lowest possible setting. 0.01 or just 1%. We'll put this source just a little bit inland. This time, no floods and a more controllable water flow. To give a more realistic feel to your river, why not plop a few of these 1% sources along the length of your river? And if done properly, more carefully than I've done here, it can make your river gradually widen and strengthen as it gets closer to the coast. Okay, but what if you don't want running water, you want a pond? a lake or just a muddy puddle. Fear not, this tool allows for this too. Here I've already dug out a small lake. My first tip is to stop the simulation, so hit the spacebar now. Any obvious mistakes can be corrected before half your city is flooded. Let's plop down the water source and see what happens. Hmm, it doesn't look like this lake is going to fill any higher than this. Okay, let's increase the water source. Turning the tap on higher should fix this right. About 50%, yeah? Oh, dagnabbit! We appear to have made a boo-boo. Okay, let's delete the water source before any more damage is done. And voila, a lake. Except for one little problem. We know that without a water source, this lake will dry up fairly quickly. We need a water source that won't overflow the lake. This time, let's drop that level back down to 1%. But even 1% will overflow the banks in little to no time. Move your cursor away and then back onto the beaker. See how the area has turned white. This is the fill to level. Your water source will keep on pumping out water until the water reaches this level. Frankly, this will never happen, 
as the water will reach the sea and pour off the edge of the map before doing this. With your cursor over the beaker, left click and move the mouse up and down. You'll see the fill level move up and down too. We'll drop the fill level down to just below the banks of our lake. Then if we start the simulation and wait, the lake will fill up to that point that we specified. And now with a water source in place, as evaporation happens, the water will be instantly replaced. You'll also be able to draw drinking water from here, though set at 1%, this source will struggle to keep up. I think you can work out the solution. Next I have a neat little trick for you. So we can draw water from this lake, yeah. But if we pump sewage into it, then it's going to get very nasty very quickly. And not only that, it'll soon overflow. We can fix that too. Let's plop down three sources, all on this occasion set to 4%. Actually, two sources would do, but three will give a more balanced look in the end. The first one is set to the fill lake level. The second one, in the middle, is set as low as the game will let us. And the third, well, to the fill level again. What is going to happen here is the two sources at each end will try and fill and maintain the lake. But the middle source is going to try and maintain the lake at the lowest possible level and as such will magically try to pump some of it away. Now you can see our lake has water flow and the sewage pump here will see the brown stuff sucked away and out of the map. Neater. It's still pretty hard to see this so let's change the settings a little. Increasing the ratio so that the drain is set much higher than the two water sources, well now you can clearly see the physics involved. And if we set everything back to 1%, we have a nice little maintained lake with actual water flow. Finally, the sea. Sea motion is created in the game by pushing a small amount of new water in from the sides of the map. Obviously this would soon overflow the whole map, so on one side you'll find that water is allowed to drain. There's really nothing for you to do, it's just useful information. The one tool we've not looked at is change sea level which does exactly what you'd expect it to. Click on the tool, then left click and push the mouse up or push the mouse down to see where the new sea levels will be. I blame global warming myself. <laughs> well, I guess they're called floodplains for a reason. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking and subscribing. Join me Monday to Saturday for What Map, where we look at a creator map and decide if it'd be right for your next city build. Also tune in for Skylines Talk, where I chat to some of the best creators in the City Skylines community. Thanks for watching, I've been Bon Bon B, and you've been very, very welcome. <laughs>